In that case, can we please give a huge welcome to VG Lee? To VG Lee and Scout the Lout. I'm going to talk a bit about French Bulldogs. Um, Scout will come amongst you and uh, possibly say hello. Hold on, I'll... Uh, Scout. <laughs> now, this was Scout when I first met her. Um, nearly 18 months ago. This is Scout now. So I'll just tell you a little brief uh, history of Scout before I go on. For a start, I don't like dogs. I've always liked cats. I've always had cats. I can clean a, a cat litter tray five times a day and not flinch. I don't like picking up after dogs. However, I've got Scout. In 2022, Christmas, a man was seen outside B&Q sitting on the ground and on a blanket he had several French Bulldog puppies and he was selling them for £400 each. He didn't manage to sell them. I know this because the vet told me because she offered 250 which was all the money she had and he refused. Move forward to the first week of January 2023, it was very cold, and my friend, who lives on the West Hill and normally drives a car, her pen name is Micra Mary, and um, so she always has driven a Micra for about 40 years, um, she decided, as it was the new year, to walk down and get a bus back to, up to the West Hill. When she was standing in the queue, the same man approached her with a carrier bag full of French Bulldog puppies, still at £400. Now, I know many people say one shouldn't encourage people, but it was cold. This was the smallest little dog in the bag, and she felt sorry for it. So she gave the man a £20 deposit, caught the bus up to the West Hill, collected her building society book, I don't know if anybody still has a building society book, but she does. Um, I got the £380 out. She paid the man, and he wouldn't let her have the dog until he'd checked the currency out in the betting shop. And then she had the dog. Sadly, she became, my friend became ill. Um, she's a lot better now, but she couldn't keep the dog. And I have a a rescue cat and um, it suffers from anxious eczema. Um, I don't know if anyone else has things like that. Some people do suffer from anxious eczema themselves. Um, but I took Scout on and in a way at that time it seemed as if it ruined my life but that was then. <laughs> so a little bit about French Bulldog. Now, in the early 1990s, French Bulldogs weren't particularly popular in England. However, due to bits that I'll tell you later, um, abroad they, they did become very popular. Um, sorry, not in the 1990s, in the 1900s. And this is a picture of the novelist Colette and she always kept French Bulldogs. Her favourite, her muse, was a little dog called Toby Chien. And she loved it to distraction. It, was, it appeared in one of her novels, Dialogue of Beasts. And when her marriage broke up to Henry Gortier Villas, or Villy, uh, she fought him for custody of the dog. And they couldn't come to an agreement, and in the end they shared. So I'm just going to show you a couple, t t three more, that showed how they were popular in Europe between uh, around 1920, just before. This is Morris II. Um, I should say champion Morris II. 
and his own was owned by Mrs. E. Pulsifer of 2469 Broadway, New York City. And between 1901 and 1906, he won a lot of, of uh, awards. I found a picture of Mrs. Pulsifer only today, and fortunately I couldn't bring it in, but it was extraordinary how Mrs. Pulsifer and her uh, champion Morris II looked very similar. <laughs> I hope I'm allowed to say things like that about people. In 1908, this was in Vienna, um, and Anna Maria Sascha, who was married to a famous restaurant and, restaurateur and hotelier, Edward Sascha, and she was known for her liking of cigars and her French bulldogs. Now, this is a more of a sad one, and I won't tell you the whole story because I don't want to bring the evening to a close. Uh, just a moment, please. As you can imagine, that sound every hour of the day can be very annoying. <laughs> this is Ortipo, and she belonged to the Grand Duchess Tatiana Romanov of Russia. Ultimately, Ortipo would follow the Duchess Tatiana and the Romanov's family to Tobolsk where she was last recorded holding her suitcase in one hand, the dog under her arm, and walking across a muddy street towards the governor's house, um, where her, her uh, future was, very, was totally limited, if not at all. On to brighter things. When I first had Scout, and really, most of the time anyway, she refused to walk. She didn't like the wind and she didn't like the rain. And as you know, on the south coast, that's something we get a lot of. So a kind friend bought me a pram. Now, I don't know if you can just see her outline in there, but if it was a bit clearer, you'd see she looked furious. <laughs> and it was sort of like walking... Um, the Incredible Hulk on a small scale, because the whole pram used to vibrate, or bits of it used to come out as her head or a paw or a shoulder nudged it. Um, so that, that proved it totally unviable, the pram, and I would advise anybody else thinking of buying prams for their small dogs to think twice, because it's hard to uh, navigate prams over grass. Um, I just want to read a little bit. I'm going to read little bits from my diary. A year ago. Imagine this. It is 6.30 a.m. Storm Kieran is raging. Wearing raincoat over pyjamas, umbrella turned inside out, I'm standing in my backyard, exhorting Scout to go toilet. In the houses opposite... Bedroom and bathroom lights are being switched on. Go toilet, I say, time after time. And this, finally, Scout goes toilet. I'm only reading this to you today because Scout has been toilet. And so we're in the clear, I hope. Any day now, a neighbour will lean out of their window and yell at me, for Christ's sake, why don't you go toilet and let the dog get some sleep? <laughs> we go indoors. I towel Scout dry, which she thinks is a great game. Finally, she returns to her bed on the sofa. Wide awake, I take a mug of tea back upstairs. Claudia, the cat, has also heard my instructions, and she has used her litter tray. It is 6.55 a.m. That was the early days. Now, this is one of Scout looking at her most intelligent. Um, what can I say about French Bulldogs? I've, I'm constantly meeting people who have French Bulldogs. Um, 
And they all just, the, the, the main thing they say is that they're stubborn um, and often don't want to walk. But intelligence doesn't come into it. Good humoured, they're quite sweet. So, um, the average dog, so this is a bit about dogs. Now, are there any dog owners in the audience? There's a lot. So you all know far more about dogs than me. And if I didn't have to leave at the end of this, I'd be wanting to know how to stop her rubbing her bottom on the floor. But I do, so I'll have to leave that scout back. The average dog can learn up to 165 words. Now, is anybody in the audience, do they feel that their dog can do that? Well, that's something to work towards. <laughs> However, the dogs in the top 20% of intelligence can learn up to 250 words, which seems incredible. Apparently, they can have the uh, intelligence of a two and a half year old toddler. Um, this one doesn't. <laughs> They also have a basic understanding of simple arithmetic, or they know when the arithmetic is wrong, as in if you offer your dog three treats and only give her two, they do know that they're missing one. Um, in intelligence rating, Border Collies come first, Poodles second, followed by German Shepherds. Fourth on the list are Golden Retrievers, six Dobermans, Shetland Sheepdogs, and finally Labradors. French uh, Bulldogs do not appear on any lists. <laughs> okay, right, I'm going to speed up. Um, so far, Scout knows the following words. Treats, walk, pavement, left, right, dinner, names of my friends and family, names of her toys, so she has a quite a way to go. So this is her in Alexandra Park, and she's not running anywhere. Um, she's just standing. And this is what she does in the middle of the pavement when I take her for a walk to Morrison's. I think I'm going to ask, Mary, would you like to take the dog? Go to Mary. All right. She's also a very disloyal dog, um, and she would have gone with almost any of you. Uh, there's someone in the middle row with a stripy top on, and uh, she does like a stripy top. So, just more about them. That scout, that's an autumnal pitch, and you get a real feel of the intelligence in that face, don't you? Um, she's a sweetheart. Somebody, a local uh, photographer, wanted to take a photograph of me, and quite frankly, without scouting it, who pushed herself in the way and stared at the, the photographer, all it would have been was a, a rather good-natured elderly lady looking as though she was going gaga. Right, finally, scouting Alexandra Park. No. <laughs> No, I've run ahead of myself. I've gone so fast. This is Scout. Looking very sweet. But I'm just going to say a little bit about how... Sorry to, to not be able to... I've come a long way and we've had it... It's been quite a difficult journey with the dog, actually. Um... Right. Contrary to what the name suggests, the origin of, of the breed is English. It originates from smaller, lighter uh, bulldogs, which were used uh, far earlier for bull baiting. However, in 1835, bull baiting was outlawed, and they became the chosen dog of lace makers in the Nottingham area. I think because they like sitting on your laps and cuddling, it kept the lace makers warm, their feet, their, their knees and whatever. Anyway, the lace makers, come the Industrial Revolution, moved to France, and um, they became a very popular dog in France. They were also very popular with prostitutes uh, and also with the prostitutes' customers because they're sort of enchanting little dogs. Um, so I'm going to end 
with, I was going to ask if anybody had any questions, because Scout is looking as if she's asking you a question, but do you want to ask me a question about her? Just, just one person, perhaps. Sorry? Are you better at picking up the poo? Oh, um, well, actually, the person who just took the dog is better than me at picking up the poo, um, and she's excellent. But I still do pick up poo. I, I, can, I can do it, but I don't like it. And sometimes when the cat, like this morning, um, I cleared the patio, and then as I got upstairs, I could hear the litter tray going. And at those points, I think, why the devil did I have any animal at all? And for Cavin Scout, it was like being handed a baby when I was in my 70s and told to look after it. Um, but I love her dearly, and she fits in well. So thank you very much. Thank you.